What's up guys, welcome to a new video. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at the Meta AI app, previously known as the MetaView app. They recently just changed the name. And this is the app that controls the Ray-Ban Meta smart glasses. And you can change all your settings. It's where you access your footage and all of that stuff. So let's go in and take a look at that right now. First of all, you're gonna tap the Meta AI app and we're going to uh, have a little look at this thing. So you're greeted at, uh, at the start with a home screen. Here you have your glasses at the top and a little import button. This app has changed quite a bit since the last time I talked about Meta AI and perhaps displayed this in one of my videos. The, the way it looks has changed as well as some of the features as well. I can say it's already become a lot more streamlined. So here we have, I, I clearly need to import one uh, video from this. I can do that now. It's gonna to ask to join uh, my glasses here in a second. Join, this is gonna then download that piece of content into my camera app. And I have this set up so that it will go both in the Meta AI app and then also into my camera roll as well, which is good. So here at the top, we have the glasses. I guess this just throws us straight into device settings. You can see if we need any updates. Uh, my, my device is up to date, which is good. And then you have your general settings. So here we can restart the glasses, unpair the glasses or reset. Uh, here's the about. Okay, this is gonna tell me about the uh, exact version of glasses that I have as well as serial numbers and stuff like that for the glasses and the case. Wi-Fi, this just talks, I guess you just set up your Wi-Fi network that uh, this, these glasses recognize, which I think is helpful uh, for automatic transfer of footage. I think you have to do it for that. Uh, set up a, a shared Wi-Fi network. Um, and then I believe it will automatically upload and download uh, all of the footage from your glasses automatically without you having to click that join button. So here we have a sec section called experiences. Here's the Meta AI. If we go into this, there's a section to turn on or off Meta AI. So you don't always have it available if you don't want it, like it's not always gonna be on. And then we have some of the Hey Meta. Oh, there they go. The glasses are going uh, cancel. say, hey, Meta, cancel. Hey, Meta, cancel. I'm going to keep going. Anyway, it hasn't canceled it. Um, so here, yeah, here we have some of the Meta responses, some of the preferences. Language and voice. This is where you can do character voices or notable people. I'm in uh, English, British English. I'm actually in the States right now but I use uh, British English, United Kingdom. Our only uh, celebrity, I think, is Judy Dench, of course. And I think if you change these languages, you can go to USA English, United States English, and you have access to more voices, which is interesting. And you can, um, we can see how these sound, so. Here's one of the voices you can choose. You can always change it later in settings. That's Aquafina. <laughs> John, uh, John C C Cena, Sienna, Sana. Here's one of the voices you can choose. You can always change it later in settings. Uh, Keegan Michael. I don't know any of these Here's celebrities. Here's one of the voices you can choose. You can always change it later in settings. And Kristen Bell. Here's one of the voices you can choose. You can always change it later in settings. Here's one of the voices you can choose. You can always change it later in settings. That's Aspen Indigo. Here's one of the voices you can choose. You can always change it later in settings. Sage. Here's one of the voices you can choose. You can always change it later in settings. And one of the good things is you can change the speaking rate because I found that the responses were a bit slow and I actually used GPT a lot. And I always find that the responses are really slow then. I just want it to hurry up. So I like the fact they added this. You also have uh, Spanish, French, Italian, but they don't have as many options. So Spanish language just has low, medium, and high. So we have low. Is it going to give us a little? Aquí tienes una de las voces que puedes usar. Puedes cambiar. Medium. Aquí tienes una de las voces que puedes usar. Puedes. 
Aquí tienes una de las voces que puedes usar. Puedes cambiarla en ajustes más tarde. Okay. So those are the options you have for I'm going to discard those because I don't want those. Um let's look at the uh English ones. Judy Dent. Here's one of the voices you can choose. You can always change it later in settings. Um so as you can always change it later in settings. Atlas. Here's one of the voices you can choose. You can always change it later in settings. So overall, I don't think that these voices are as natural sounding as some of the other ones that you can get with GPT. Um, I like how they added some celebrity stuff, but I really don't think that it sounds super like her. Uh, I think there are other AI voice assistants that sound better in my opinion so mobile data updates this is where you choose where, whether you want updates on mobile data so then we go from meta ai we go to communication so this is where you can plug in your different apps that you have um, you can have it connected to your phone to whatsapp these will all allow you to receive calls and answer messages and just allows you to have more functionality with these meta glasses here you can see I've connected my WhatsApp. Uh, I could connect my phone, Facebook, uh, Messenger, and Instagram. So it doesn't really give you any connection to some of the others like TikTok or X or any of the other big social media networks, which is a little annoying, but also I kind of accept it or I expected it because it's meta. Um, and you can also have it announce calls. I found that pretty distracting and a little bit annoying whenever uh, I'm getting a call and it's talking to me or reading me text messages as well. Um, but you might want to have that set up. Connected apps. Here we have the apps that are connected to uh, that connect to it. So other ones uh, are going to be Amazon Music, Apple Music, Calm, which I guess is a uh, mental health or a relaxation meditation app. Shazam. You we all know what Shazam is. You music's playing, you don't know what the name of it is, you Shazam it. Um, now, if you connect Shazam, do you have to have an account? Oh, it's connected. Okay. Um, Spotify as well. Okay, so the downside that I found, and I think I'm an anomaly in this um, with this, and I've mentioned it in other videos as well, is I use YouTube music. If you pay for YouTube premium, you have YouTube music as part of that. And it has pretty much the same selection as Spotify and Apple Music, from my experience, at least anyway. If you have a different experience, let me know in the comments below. Um, but I cannot connect that on my uh, to my glasses, which is really annoying, which means that I can't ask the glasses to play certain songs or certain playlists, which I found really frustrating. And I've all, honestly almost considered signing up to another one of these music platforms this is probably not going to be a big problem for many of you because most people do have Spotify or Apple Music. But for me, it's a bit of a pain in the ass. So we have our gestures as well. So for the music control, you can change them. So here are gestures that you can use. There's a touchpad on the side of the glasses that allow you to turn the volume up and skip songs. But I'm guessing here there's a gesture for setting up the AI. So instead of having to say the prompt, you can just tap with either uh, tap and hold with one finger or tap and hold with three fingers, which I think is kind of good. So that's the connected apps. Next is media. So this is going to be about how you collect your media, I guess, and where it goes. So we have video settings here. This will give us the amount of time that we can record for. Initially, it was just like 15 seconds, I think, was the maximum. Now we have 15, 30, 60, and three minutes. Now, I initially, as soon as the three-minute option came up, I was really stoked about that because I'm a filmmaker, a videographer. I like to film everything. But after a while, I realized that the file sizes were getting so big and the transfer times were so much because I was often forgetting that I was recording um, when I didn't need to be, I turn it back to 15 seconds so that I'm just capturing little snippets. I find these glasses are great for capturing moments of the day to post on social media and not so much for uh, recording long things because most of the long form stuff that I want to record 
is going to be in landscape mode, like YouTube videos like this. And the short form stuff is going to be short form. Uh, sorry, the vertical stuff is going to be short form. So um, I kept it to uh, 15 or 30 seconds. And I guess I have it set up to 30 seconds right now. So here we have uh, the import settings. So auto import whilst charging. Uh, network saved. So imports, here's what I was talking about with the network. So uh, if you have auto import while, ch while charging and you're connected to the same Wi-Fi network, um, it will auto import for you. So you don't have to prompt it. I guess there's a cache and uh, you can clear that here with this uh, setting here. It looks like I have eight gigabytes that will free up some space on your phone if, if that fills up. And always show made with Ray-Ban Meta. Okay, this is interesting. This is a new feature that's come up in the app. Before, whenever I would post any content from my glasses indirectly, so I film something and then I download it into my Photos app and then upload it to Instagram, um, it will always say made uh, filmed on Ray-Ban Meta glasses. And I didn't really like it because I just felt like they were intruding on my product in a way. Uh, I, I didn't really want them to get free advertising on my post and not make any commission off of it. So I was kind of annoyed that it would it would come up. And I guess now you can turn that off. So if you want to post, it doesn't say that it's been filmed on your glasses, uh, which I think is great because, I don't know, I'm not getting paid to promote Ray-Ban Metasmart glasses, maybe through ad revenue from these videos, but... Um, not directly on Instagram. So if I'm not making money off of it, uh, I don't want to, I don't really want to, to, to put that on there. So I'm going to actually turn that off. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Do you think that's being stupid? Um, perhaps it's contradictory considering I make so much content about the glasses, but anyway, just something how I felt. So now we have, uh, audio. So. Here's an interesting one. I think that a lot of people had questions about, do the glasses stop playing music when you take them off or does it keep playing or does that run the battery down? And uh, here we have the settings for that. So you can turn it, either turn auto pause on or off depending on what you want. And I actually think it's great to, turn, to, to have it off. I often find that trying to tap the arm whenever you're in a conversation or whenever you just get into a conversation can be quite finicky. Sometimes I can miss the pad and it doesn't, it's not immediate. Like as soon as I touch it, it doesn't pause the music. So I find myself having to remove the glasses to not be distracted by the music. Um, so yes, the auto pause thing is great for that reason. I can take my glasses off my face and the music pauses and I can put them back on and we're back to where we stop, uh, back where we left off. Adaptive volume as well. I think I'm going to change this because I find it quite annoying. I'll crank the volume up in a loud environment um, and uh, and then it will quieten right off and I just want it to stay the same. So I'm going to turn that off. Um, then going down, we have our LED brightness. So this is the LED that is inside of your glasses. So I've been talking about in some other videos that there's an LED and I think the only way I can activate this is by pressing the record button. So I'm going to press the record button now. Okay, here. And then now you're going to see here, there's a flashing light. This is to indicate that the glasses are indeed recording. Um, so I like to know. I don't want there to be any, uh, I don't want to know, wonder if I'm recording or not recording. So I have the LED brightness too high. Wear detection. Uh, this is, I guess, more features pausing whenever you take off and put on this, uh, the glasses, which I think is great. Gestures, these are the uh, for the touchpad, um, very similar to what we had just looked at, exactly the same. Capture button, you can reverse the capture button. So one, um, one click of the button is uh, either photo or video, and you can choose that. So for me, I primarily like to uh, use these glasses for video. So setting that as the default for the first for one touch is something that's going to be handy for me. Microphone troubleshooting, I guess. 
Uh, I guess some people have had issues with their microphone. I haven't. I found the microphones are great on this thing, even in a noisy environment. I can talk on the phone and people understand me very well. No problems there. Uh, glasses privacy. Let's look at the privacy. It holds a voice log. It holds voice storage as well. So um, if you if you enable it, and I haven't, so it's got none of my voice storage. I don't really want it to have my voice. A voice activity log. Okay. So here is a log of my uh, questions and, and the things that I've asked uh, to Meta AI. And I guess it's picked up on some things that I didn't really care for it to hear, but that's fine as well. I guess it's part of the game. And then cloud media. Okay. Wow. Okay. So this is something that's come up that wasn't available before. I didn't, I don't think I opted into, maybe I did, wasn't paying attention to it. Cloud media, allow your photos and videos to be sent to, Meta AI, to Meta's cloud for processing and temporary storage. All right, we should find out what that is. Are they using my photos to gain information about what I like, what I don't like? Um, I guess I'm gonna have to uh, check this out here. Okay. I'm not going to be able to figure out what this is until without a little bit more time to dig into it, but I'd be curious to know what that is. I'm going to leave it on just for ease of use here. Security. Okay. Require phone uh, unlock. Okay. So I guess this is to stop people taking your glasses and being able to call and talk to whoever, um, which I think is a good, good one to have. Be my eyes. This is a feature that uh, they have come up with for a, a while ago. And uh, I guess it's available now, at least in the US. So you can have a volunteer that can be your eyes. So I guess there's a camera feed that goes from your glasses to whatever you're looking at. And that person will get a video call and be able to explain to you whatever it is, um, which is really interesting. I think it's going to be great for people that have really bad uh, eyesight, which is, I think that's really awesome. Okay, so that's device settings. So now we have more uh, footage to import based on the, the times we've recorded just now. Um, this translate thing, this is interesting. So here, translations in real time. A live translation, you can understand speech uh, in different language. Okay. View translations in the app. In conversation, your responses will be translated for your partner to read in the app. Save and your device. Continue. Okay. Before you begin, select the languages to download to your glasses. Okay, well, this is cool. This is something we're gonna to have to dig in when we are traveling. Uh, I don't have anybody that speaks any other languages around me, so I can't really take advantage of that or figure it out. Um, you have learn and explore here. This is a tab, I guess, where you can learn how to do certain stuff, like how to take photos um, and learn more about the product. So. These are little tutorials, which is great. It's nice to see that they're giving you a full tour of that sort of stuff. Here we have some history. So this is also a history of the communication between Meta AI. And I guess you can delete it as well as uh, go back to your settings and log out. Um, and yeah, there's some settings info there as well and then notifications as well. So here are your notifications to the app. So this is the Ray-Ban Meta Smart Glasses app. Uh, it's pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. It looks like you can add another pair of glasses to this as well, which is really cool. Um, the one downside I would say about this is that you can't connect your glasses currently, I believe, to multiple devices. So I have an iPad as well, and I can connect it to my iPad, but then I have to, but then essentially it disconnects from my phone. And then my iPad, I guess, is my main device. And I can't use these things with my computer through Bluetooth. It would be great if these seamlessly connected to all my devices, which is probably going to be something that Apple's going to do with their version. Um, but this is the Meta AI app as it currently stands here in May, at the beginning of May in 2025. I'm sure features will be added and I'm sure this will improve over time. So once again, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say, what your thoughts are, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.